uh, touch on a different topic here within the uh, NEC. Um, I know there's um, been some code change around, um, or at least explaining the code change around calculating loads and the rationale behind it. Alan, can you go ahead and uh, explain that to us? Sure, so, so in Article 220, we've, we've, we've done some heavy looking at the, at, the, at the loads that we're seeing in buildings today, right? And it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to see, right, the, the incandescent light to uh, CFL uh, to, to LEDs today and what that energy level change means to, to all of us. And so that also impacts uh, really the calculations that uh, we see ultimately on our electrical infrastructure. So the, 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 the NEC has responded to that and, and really put together a task group looking at those, looking at those energy loads and also comparing those to uh, the energy code because the energy code in states, which completely independent of the electrical code, is driving those reduction of that energy, making sure we have lighting control or specific lighting uh, load capability. And so by reducing that, uh, we don't necessarily need that load in, in the building today, right? So we've, we've gone in and looked at this and, and, the, and the ASHRAE standards uh, are adopted, the ASHRAE and the IECC codes are adopted across the states in different versions. And so, but, but we do have some type of version typically in every state. So we're able to align uh, the occupancies and those load areas to the ASHRAE standards. So uh, you'll notice in table two, uh, 220.12 that all of those occupancy types have changed and align with the ASHRAE uh, occupancy so that we begin to get some synergy right around uh, some consistency around the two documents. And we've also aligned what those load calculations or those loads look like based on those energy codes. Now, it's, it's not the most current one because mm -hmm. all states aren't on that, but we have, we have uh, begun to align with that and it allows us to continue to monitor those energy codes and how they're being used across the country for the NEC to be progressive and, and, and reflect uh, those calculations. So I think you need to study uh, as a contractor, as you're doing these calculations, or an engineer, you need to study these the, the loads in these tables because there are some significant reductions. Some are some are nearly the same, but you'll find some of them that are 25, 30 percent lower. And you know, if you're not considering those loads and doing those calculations, you may find yourself at a competitive disadvantage uh, when you're looking at bidding a project and understanding that. So it's very important that you understand and review. Uh, the calculations and understand what the changes are here. Absolutely, if we take a look, some of the substantiation for some of these changes looked at old fluorescent fixtures with electromagnetic ballasts. And what we used to get done at 180 volt amps, we're getting done at less than 30. Mm -hmm. And there's some significant reductions that Alan talked about, and that will significantly impact the size of your service and feeders throughout a, a structure, especially a larger, uh, high rise where lighting is going to be your largest load. Mm -hmm. This is an excellent example of the NEC remaining relevant and adoptable to handle these new technologies used for lighting loads, for example, within uh, today's uh, buildings.